Everybody, aloha and welcome to the Daily Pigeon Podcast. My name's Andy Boomatan. And I'm James Money. And you are the Hamajang Gang. The Hamajang Gang is what we call the people who are in the live chat. So if you'd like to be part of the Hamajang Gang, please participate. That's all you have to do. Hamajang in Hawaiian Pigeon English, we always mention, means all mix up a lot of apps. Any so kind. We are certainly that. So let's say how's it to a few of the people in the chat. Uh, first of all, Medium 7-Up says, Haole la hanao, Michael Anthony Smith, hey. which is happy birthday in Hawaiian to brother Michael Anthony Smith. Happy who, birthday. Who will be going to sleep soon because he's up early doing his uh, radio oh, yes. personality yes. gig so yeah while you're here bro right there whoo hey mahalo medium seven up hope you had an awesome birthday today i think he might have you know duro works hey how's it aloha and look who's here mama sean saying aloha everyone everyone yes. not messing around Devin, one of our moderation the moderationists mahalo sam hope you have a great day Gina Gamba saying aloha to Devin. And aloha state of mind, aloha to Devin. Man, De Ooh. Devin's popular. Populationist. <laughs> Off the hook. How's it, Andy and James? <laughs> hey, we got some love. Hey, Ellen, aloha, Duro Works, and there's Sal Salvador. Aloha, y'all. Artist. Yes, aloha, y'all, from the big island of Texas. Uh, uh, Facebook user, um, just saying, how's it to us? By the way, we are on uh, Facebook, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, Twitch, um, Kick, and Rumble. Ooh, Rumble. So we are, um, you know... All over the place. All over the place. Mahalo for filling in the blank there, yeah. brother. <laughs> Devin, say hello to Gina. Yeah, the Gina. Gamba. Gamba. Yeah, Leilani Lamour. Ah. Lamour. 
Oh, so you gotta say, how's that? How's that? You know, I see the Okina in there, but oh, okay. it, it's not Okina, you know what I mean? It's something else. Hey, Kione Nunes, Aloha, Andy Bumitai, James Money, and all the Hama Jang gang. Yeah, plenty. Ooh, and there's the birthday boy Jeez. saying, Mahalo Nui Loa. Happy birthday, June Kubasa. Aloha, guys. Glad to have you on the air. In the air, on yeah. the air, outside the air. Uh, Benjamin Hansen, first hey. time watching from Houston, uh, from Tucson, Arizona. Hey. hey, Ben, we have a tradition. Uh, let us know what your old stomping grounds are for, uh, in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have visited. Maybe you lived here. Maybe whatever. Yeah. Let us know. We may have a custom-made music video that goes through your old neighborhood and you can spark on all the people who owe you money <laughs> <laughs> right there Devin saying how's it to people back she has yeah. a lot of people to say back yes because yeah. everybody say hi to her Kevin Frazier hey Andy you wearing contacts today oh yeah you picked up on that <laughs> Yes, I definitely am, and I didn't mean to. I went and got contact lenses for the first time, only one, because this eye gone, right? But um, And I was going to wear my glasses, but it's the new soft kind, and I'm not used to these, and I couldn't figure out how to get it out, so I had to go <laughs> with it. But I can kind of see it's not really designed for this. It's kind of you know far, but mm -hmm. anyway, that's what's Whatever you do, don't use any of your tools to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, bring me that vice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Rick S. Hey, Rick, uh, you are now an officially a moderator on the Twitch side. I know uh, Nani and I did it offline. Now we just have to work on YouTube. I have not forgotten. And speaking of Nani, aloha, one of our moderationists and a, an associate producer. Yes. There she is right there. Woo. Doing okay. How about you? Woo. Ooh, uh, Gina Gamba mm -hmm. is uh, doing okay. Not all right. A little warm again today in Hawaii, nay, but <sighs> I'll say just it's happy. Humid. Yeah, but because it rains, it rains overnight, and then it gets crazy hot in the day. Yeah, and then we get our own personal sauna. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, now help me say this: there, Elika Pekka. El, uh, Pekka. I'm assuming Elizabeth. Oh, Elika Pekka Torres. Yes. Oh, that's that. RN. From the island of Rhode. Oh. My dad, Dennis, is from Kalihi. Ooh. Oh. So uh, maybe we, we do a Kalihi one? Is that what you're asking? Oh, you never see the Gulick Avenue one. Oh, yeah, that was Gulick Avenue. Yeah. That, that was our pre roll, was Gulick Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Who? Michael Anthony Smith just saying aloha to everybody who, if the longer he's up, the more mahalos he's going to be saying. Who looking good, Andy? I'll take I'll take time to get, it'll take time to get used to him. No, you know it's just the seeing part. It doesn't feel weird or mm -hmm. anything. It feels weird without your glasses because you get used to them, you know. Yeah. But, uh, I like I like it. I actually bought some sunglasses today that don't have prescription, so I could put them on over these, you know, because all my sunglasses have some kind of prescription. I'm talking eBay prescription. Mm -hmm. Oh, give me that tree, you know, not not go to the doctor. But I went to the uh, optometrist today, mm -hmm. and she's the one that suggested. Have you ever tried contact lenses? And, uh, and when I do the news things that we're doing, right, uh, I bought a teleprompter, and I want to be able to use a teleprompter. And, mm. But without my glasses, I can't read it. Right. <laughs> so it, you know what this reminds me of, that old joke where, the, where, the, where a cop pulls over the, the brother, you know, and, hey, bro, I'm looking at your license. It says you're supposed to be wearing glasses. Or, oh, uh, officer, I have contacts. Bro, I don't care who you know. That's very Hawaii. I I, I know some people. <laughs> oh, hey, you ain't Kamehameha. <laughs> no, that's firemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, firemen, but a lot of cops do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Matt Statter is here saying aloha from Seattle. Seattle One. Yeah. Oh, Seattle not, One. Oh, they've, they've upgraded, I guess. Yeah, that's what well, it's the first Seattle. Yeah. Old school. Ah, oh, I see, I see. <laughs> Maybe that's the very way to do it. Oh, Happiness ben, days to you, Michael. What's that? Ben uh, Jamin Hansen says, uh, Crazy Holly from Alawai side, 1980s. Alawai, 1980s. You the Ooh. guy, Andy Bumatai. I think we, we have one that uh, Ben Jamin Hansen. 
we may have, I think I have one video, I got to think of what it was, that goes through the Alawai, mm. you know. Plus, they're try that's where they're trying to build that bridge now, yes, the yes. pedestrian bridge over. How's it, David Escobar? Aloha, no. Ooh. Did we say hi to June? Yep. Who you need cheaters. Yeah, well, I believe me, I got all the little, you know, things. But right now, because I can't dig this thing out, I try to wear my... And it's... Oh, they, they cancel each other out or something. No, it's just so blurry oh. because it's magnified by, you know... You got to get the contacts with the handles so they can just... Oh, on. that's what I need. <laughs> Excuse me, I can have the contact handle. Either that or just a vacuum cleaner. Oh, oh my eye! <laughs> Okay. Oh, no. hey, what happened to your eye? Uh, no ass. Like, well, I took off the contact and the maca pia pia. Like, Got them all. Clean ah, eye. One time. Oh, man. Who from San Leandro, California. Gee. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I remember doing a show in San Leandro one time, and the guy go, he goes, this guy's name, I, he says, uh, I said, what's your name? He goes, oh, Al Moana. His name, his name was Al Moana. And wow. Like, Al Moana? That's like living here and your name is Stan Leandro. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, I hope his middle initial is not A. Crowd work. Yeah, I know. Off the hook. Uh, hello, Homestead Road. Hola. Uh, hello, Haula, Homestead yeah. Road. I have the scars to prove it. <laughs> what? Hey, how's it, Kenny Roberts? Aloha Tuesday, Jeez. Emma Jane Gang and all. Okay, we have a rather interesting... Um, what, by the way, what we do is we editorialize videos here, mm -hmm. right, uh, to give the migrated Hawaiians small kind idea of what's been going on here. But this first one, I didn't really understand it, and I'm hoping that you may uh, enlighten us with your uh, athletic prowess oh. and understanding the, um, you know, the, that culture way more than I ever will. <laughs> Go long! <laughs> no, but here, here ch check this out, I, and I don't really understand it. Breaking news this morning, this Friday's scheduled high school football game between Castle and Waianae High School has been officially called off. Yeah, a joint letter was sent to parents from the principals of those schools. In it, they say it was a joint decision between both Castle and Waianae made to, quote, prioritize the safety and well-being of students, staff, and families. Last Thursday, Castle was briefly put on lockdown when students from another school came on campus and started making threats. The next okay. day, why not? So uh, this is where I get lost. Right. So students from another high school went to Castle, mm -hmm. threatened them, and they had to lock down the school because of these students? Yeah, and then probably security, you know, either chased them out or escorted them off the, the campus. I'm assuming yeah. they're mm -hmm. students from Waianae. What? Well, why, because, why? Why? Because of how, the uh, how they started the 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 piece, the article, or the. Well, no, but that's just the game that they 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 cancel. So, and what has that got to do with sports? I so don't get let's it. assume, let's say it is YNI kids that came onto campus. Yeah. So they, sh because a beef is brewing between the two schools, for safety reasons, let's keep the two uh, student bodies. Oh, you think separate. it has? So you, you see. That would just, um, you know, put them together in the same spot, a football game. But, a, yeah, where gladiators play on the field. But would it, it's so you're, but that, this original incident maybe has nothing to do with football? No, no probably not. But because it's, what? it's probably the two schools. Oh. I'm assuming it's YNI students, and I wish they would let us yeah, know. Well, because, they might. But look at yeah. here, Illuminati, I think he boiled it right down. They like scrap. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and then with gun violence being the way they are, uh, um, you know, yeah. with the ghost guns. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay, let's listen. If I can find the button. Nice administration notified parents that they received information about a potential threat to their campus. What? In the joint letter, the principals say they believe in the power of sports to unite and remain committed yes. to their student athletes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, uh, that this is a, sh a short one, but you know, okay, we, we gotta we gotta figure out what's going on. Yeah, that's what I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's the, there's a beef between two student bodies. Yeah. So instead of bringing them together at some event where they can all show up and then have a big rumble, just, let's just you know, cancel that event because one, 
Um, nothing against the two football programs, but they're both kind of out of the playoff. <laughs> <laughs> they're not doing so, so strongly. Canceling, canceling their game doesn't hurt their standing. <laughs> Correct. Oh, and, man, I hadn't thought of that. And two, oh. I mean, from a lot of the, the, the pieces that we do here, we see that there is a shortage of police yeah, in yeah. Waianae, so... You know, <laughs> wait a minute. They have one police <laughs> officer at that sixty million dollar station. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, but the station doesn't transform yeah. into a super cop and then it stops yeah, everybody. And see Honda. Here's how you take a, a, a you know a contact out. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it wired. But, <laughs> you know, it's like I I did it before the show and I'm sitting there. I don't want to be in there. You know what I mean? And then you show up on the podcast with one really dark red that, eyeball. That's what I was afraid of. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and I and and I go oh I'll just get some of that you know dropped they go oh yeah but you can't put those in your eye while the contact is in there oh no you know like uh, clear eyes or, yeah, or whatever visine well they have this super one that I had to oh, go buy super twenty bucks for one small bottle of this eye thing but it's I don't know seeing is overrated <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That whole seeing thing, it's I mean, overrated. Ask Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles. Yeah, look, look what they did. Is Kahuku still on top? Uh, Le- Lani wants Again, to know. and they also, they're actually, I think, number ranked number five in the nation because wow. they beat number three, St. John Bosco from California. Okay. So, yes. Well, uh, here's here, I guess, is a, um, a little bit of good news, mm. okay? Uh, remember that yesterday we reported that the 77-year-old man in Kalihi who was attacked by that that, yes. that person on the moped. Yeah, here, check this out. PD arrested a 16-year-old suspect this morning wanted in connection arrested. to the attack and robbery of an 16. elderly man in Palama. Told you about old. this incident That's last a big week. Surveillance video oh. captured a suspect riding a moped, stopping in the road, and watching an elderly man in the red shirt. He then tried to rob him punch the man to the ground and continue to assault him until taking his wallet. What a, what a oh, no. punk. Can you believe that? But anyway, they uh, they caught the guy I, and they arrested him and he's 16 years old. I wonder if the kid knew or knows the family. I just think he, you know, he lived there, he see the old man, he go, oh, look at that wallet. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. brother yeah. is old school guarantee. He get his his car registration, his birth certificate, <laughs> and all the pictures from his kids, plus some cash. Yeah, yeah, yes. From uh, my experience driving city bus, yeah, Filipino man comes on with the wallet, get the rubber band around the wallet. Oh, that's the one. Open, and it's like a book. They just yeah. I was like, what is it on Bible? No, it's his right. wallet. <laughs> right. <laughs> 20 bucks, cheap insurance. Oh. I'm glad they caught the guy. They caught him. Yeah. Whoo, right on there and get that baga right yeah. there. Okay, we are um, at the um, quarter way through the hour, and uh, that's when we play a music video Ooh. with a drop. And uh, this first one, um, it's, it's a non a uh, Hawaii music video, but people seem to like it. And mm. it's called Dirty Mouth. And it's not about swearing. The video is about trying not to say, I love you. Oh, wow. I know, it's weird, but you got to listen to the words to understand it. But first... How's it, everyone? This is Vicky Sato in hot and sunny Tempe, Arizona. And when I need my Hawaii fix, I watch the Daily Pigeon Live with Andy Bumatai and chat with the Hamajang gang.
too much when I'm drunk. Oh, and here I go again. Here I go. The wink we all live for. <laughs> I just love that at the end. Ooh. Good to be young. We are now going to go to Maka. Hey. And guess what? Uh oh. They get one new bridge. Oh. And I tell you what, <clears throat> about time. That's their building them. <laughs> yeah, and we begin they tonight with a the live look right from there. West Oahu, where a major construction project to replace the old wooden Makaha Bridge is underway. Hmm. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Wow. I'm Allison Blair. Hundreds of residents on the leeward side of the island have been all but cut off since Friday night. Earlier today, even first responders wow. couldn't get through. Eddie yeah. Dowd reports. The Makaha Bridge is the only way to get in and out of this area, and for three hours on Sunday, it was closed to first responders. The bridge that was there, a hundred years old. Wow. How's that? Oh, that's too bad then, because the yeah. history. Well, I, I got an interesting thing to say about uh -oh. it too. The DOT says emergency personnel had access to the bridge when it closed to the public Friday night. But on Sunday morning, it was completely shut down from 9 to 11 a.m. as the new steel bridge was slid into wow. place. So this was a very unique situation for us. Um, we did prepare thoroughly for this. Honolulu EMS and HFD units were staged on the Ka'ena Point side of the bridge with units on standby on the Wai'anae side. So they would have triaged, they can treat, they can treat uh, gunshot wounds, they can insert breathing tubes. <laughs> If Why injuries was that her required first patients to go to the hospital, <laughs> the plan was to either load patients onto the back of an ATV and take them across the beach where another ambulance would be waiting. Wow. The DOT says they could reopen the bridge, but that would take several minutes, a situation that would add time to an emergency response where every second counts. Overseeing the operation himself, the head of the State Department of Transportation. Sniffing. Went door to door to everybody in this area to talk about their concerns. And we wanted to make sure we could address them as much as possible. To this brother is everywhere. <laughs> make sure we minimize all the impact of that. So we really thank him. We were with director Ed Sniffin during that three hour closure. Okay, Ed, it looks like that three hour window is now <laughs> over where emergency responders <laughs> couldn't access this Miles. area. No major incidents. Some might say you got lucky. I don't think we got lucky. We planned. We planned appropriately. Yeah. The great thing is, we didn't have to use it. Aside from emergency services, residents could pre-park their cars on the white and I side of the bridge and take a shuttle to their homes on the West Makaha side. <laughs> and come back and their car stolen. <laughs> <laughs> With a gunshot in it. Well, it gunshot. is well worth it. The old bridge was a wooden bridge for two and a half days of inconvenience. Yeah. We're going to have a beautiful bridge for the next 40 to 50 years. I just want to thank the public, letting us get into their homes, talk story with them, make sure we understand their concerns. A similar project is scheduled for late November for another section of the bridge. What? And the DOT tells us the new bridge will be open to the public at 8 p.m. Hey, Sunday sorry. for anyone to use it. Reporting in Makaha, Eddie Dowd, Hawaii News Now. Ooh. Ayo Kanishki, aloha no, speaking of the uh, west side or... Salema, no, no, tisa yeah. noi. Yeah, right there. That's, that's funny, her first choice <laughs> yeah, was I know. gunshot. Gunshot, I said, what? Uh, they cut her off though. You mentioned, oh, for gunshot or <laughs> domestic violence or... <laughs> or people who like go football games <laughs> and scrap. <laughs> or overdose. You know, all that kind. <laughs> There was heavy resistance with replacing that bridge. There was a whole bunch of people, and it wasn't that it was just nostalgia. Mm. It was, if you make the bridge better, 
people gonna go more fast. Oh. Now they gotta slow down because they like fall inside the small river or whatever. They should put one of those bumps that they do on the streets uh, to slow people down. You know, the what speed get, bump. Yeah. Oh no, the hundred thousand dollar one or the, is the the one that they've been putting all over. It's people the complain. speed bump. Yeah. <laughs> you, those things. you took two words and made it four <laughs> paragraphs. <laughs> But the new one, oh. not, the, not the original one. Look at this. Need another bridge from my house to Hakimo Road. No kidding. Oh, they, they, need, they need more roads over there. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I can't remember ever seeing water go, through, go under that bridge. <laughs> you know? I, mean, I grew up over there. I was like, oh, what a bridge. Look at the river. That's the problem with why night people. They you guys, don't... you guys never let the water go under the bridge. Yeah, just, hey, hey, never yeah. mind. You guys, Ooh, you guys stay yeah, mad. This not your, this not your zip yeah. code, bro. Why you, well, you cannot forgive me, bro? Water under the bridge? No, <laughs> we do not do water under our bridges. <laughs> Did I miss Kinako Cam? Is Kinako down no, there? She's no, she's not. not down there. Well, let's see if the cam works at, at all. No, it does not. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know what it is. Today is that day. <laughs> it was, it like, at least Kanako, uh, Kinako's not there. Yeah. Andy James, awesome shirts. Oh, well, thank you oh, so thank much. You. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Surfer Frank James Mane, speed bump. No, I, I think know. it's like uh, Roger Sasaki, speed hump. You know the new ones that they're making? Well, you know what the difference between a speed hump and a speed bump is? 50,000. Yeah, that's what I say. Go use, <laughs> put that on the bridge or make a roundabout bridge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. They Whatever. should just make it a ride. Nani Aloha says, Hey, lack of choices. Please keep your comments family friendly. Children uh, watching. Oh, I didn't tell you. I, <laughs> I had to go back and look. Wow, well, you had scolding. Yeah. <laughs> nah, 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 boo, boo. It's funny. I was sniffing and saying, Oh, yeah, it's good. Thank you, everybody, to welcome, wel welcoming, and welcoming them uh -huh. into their homes. Guaranteed or an eat. Guarantee everyone else. Oh, what, what, what? You like eat? You like eat? Oh yeah, yeah you like. So eat. he must have loved that. I would have loved it. You know, on um, Nana Kuli, one of the, the one of the uh, ways people say that they got their name was they would look at their knees because they didn't have a lot back in the ancient Hawaiian days. Mm -hmm. And if you looked at someone, you had to offer them water or food or housing. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. they never have that, so they Nana look at their Kuli, their knees. Right, so they looked down at their knees. That was one of the ways they thought Nana Kuli got its name. Wow. What? You're confused. You're yeah. I'm confused. trying to catch up to what you're telling me. That's yeah, trippy. Yeah, yeah they said, Kuli. you know, over in Nana Kuli, where would they look at their knees? Wow. Yeah. Well, there's a whole bunch, you know, every Hawaiian, Keone Nunes is in the, yeah. so I shouldn't talk. Salimah said you come visit. Uh, oh, next time I'll come visit you guys going back to Japan tomorrow. Oh, yeah, hey, bro, come here. We get some, you know, yeah. we got chairs that fit, uh, you yeah. know. <laughs> Brother <laughs> James, <laughs> Darren Mulberry, we get some fit you. We'd Safe love travels. to have you. We'd love to have you yeah. here. Good fun. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, here, short trip. Oh, bro. Yeah, I love that avatar. Oh, too bad we can't say make them more big. Look at that. Oh, fun guy. Yeah. So do you have any, like, history or story from your past about those bridges? Like, maybe you, that's where you, you met one, you know, friend or something. No. <laughs> that's where no, you get, no, no stories. That's where you guys used to meet and... Uh, oh. All I did was just drive over there. I can't tell you how many times I drove over that bridge. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, to me, was, you know, the bridge by Claus Myers. We, we used to call it the bridge by Cla Claus Myers. Was the, and there was a guy there. I guess his name was Claus Meyer, And he owned that land over there. And oh. the surf spot was called Claus Myers. But right there, that's, that's what we called the bridge. But I, I, <sighs> And it's no more there. It's, it's a different no bridge. It's no more. Now it's uh, the metal bridge. Yeah. You know the bridge that uh, affect your cell phone coverage? <laughs> right there, that one. The bridge when you drive over, you, the, the metal in your teeth comes sore. Oh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> no, no try make selfie on that bridge. No work, bro. Uh-oh, watch out. 
um, uh, Keone says, I lived in, um, on Hakimo Road near the highway. I remember whenever the chicken fights would finish, uh, Pakea, there would be a traffic jam. Yes, of course. That's where all the... Um, That's what a lot of people from my village live, Hakimo Road. Uh, yeah. The Vaitongi people, uh, my dad was one of them, Plenty got of them. kicked out of yeah. the, our village and was yeah. sent there because he always fought. That's why. Oh, what's his uh, on tube? Oh, YouTube comment. Yeah, there we go. Oh, uh, Keone's on YouTube. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Saleh is on uh, Facebook. Let's well. see. Darlene is on Twitch. Ooh, we all over. I we You know, the, the uh, comments from Kick and Rumble do not end up yeah. here, but we just like to say hi to everybody who may be watching on Rumble or Kick. It's very aggressive, or, those two names as yeah, you kick and then you rumble cool it's time for rumble <laughs> that's why we don't put them in our chat because yeah. i always like scrap <laughs> <laughs> the bridge by the white house Ooh, yeah, there oh yeah oh reverend lutu uh, uh i remember reverend lutu yeah. and james uh, james Martin. yeah reverend lutu you remember him well i i know the family oh. the lutu family I remember a, uh, a, a, a Samo, I don't know if he was a reverend or a chief or whatever. I remember we were kids, we were hanging around, mm -hmm. and uh, we were all, you know, talking and stuff. And he go, oh, boy, come here, come here. How come you talk so howly? <laughs> That's what he said to me. I go, what? What do you mean? He goes, the way you talk, you sound so howly. <laughs> it's called education. <laughs> Why? Because I'm, like, articulate? <laughs> I can express myself in a clear and concise manner? Is that what you're, like, saying? And then they just slap you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I know. Okay, it's the bottom of the hour, and at the bottom of the hour, what we do is we do it. We take a news break, and then we play another drop, and mm -hmm. then we play another music video. Rock How's camera? that? I know. And this, uh, after the... Um, mm. The news break. Um, this one is going to take us. Uh, um, it's it's um, bond dance season, mm. right? So um, a while back uh, we were doing this thing where we were taking uh, different ethnic dances and putting them to reggae music. Oh wow! So this is a bond dance with reggae music, and I think I might get a copyright strike on this, but worth it. Watch them live. You're going to see them. <laughs> you will see this, okay? So let's see if I can do this. But first, a news break. Welcome to the Daily Pigeon News. Today, the self-proclaimed speak police elevated their opposition to what they deem denigrating use of spoken English. An eyewitness reports that a man speaking to a crowd was struck by multiple water balloons after saying, and I quote, I was like totally like concerned that I like wouldn't like be able to have a say in like the resolution, which triggered the water balloon assault. Police are investigating. Hey, gangies. It's Pokole Tea. This is my happy place. Supercheria. Of course, my happy time is every morning with Andy and the Hamajangers on the Daily Pigeon Live.
I know. It, it works. It's funny how reggae just fits with anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, too much. It's ever oh beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Amazing how well it works. It was super cherry. <laughs> super <laughs> cherry. <laughs> oh, mean lot like that. Okay, so um, now uh, we're going to do something a little bit sad, um, and this is uh, Russ Francis mm. is uh, remembering Russ Francis. If you don't know, yesterday uh, Russ passed away in a um, plane crash mm -hmm. in New York. But uh, this is a this is a nice piece. Let, uh, let's listen. First at 4:30, the Hawaii sports world is mourning a heartbreaking and sudden loss. World champion and all-pro football star Russ Francis died in a plane crash in New York over the weekend. <sighs> over a 14-year NFL career, the former Kailua High standout is considered one of the best to come from the islands. Friends remember him as an imposing athlete with an iconic personality. And the, and the doors he opened. Yeah. You know, I hope they mention that. Muscle Russell. Russ Francis never forgot the world he came from. The must never forgot that he was one of those <laughs> who represented the Aloha spirit. From the moment he stepped on a football field, Russ Francis was considered wow. a true original. A towering, pass-catching machine that got his start in high school ball at Kailua before moving to Oregon. In 1975, the New England Patriots drafted him 16th overall, where over six seasons he was a three-time Pro Bowler and two-time All-Pro. Francis was wow. eventually traded to the San Francisco 49ers, retired for a season, came back, and won a Super Bowl in 1984. Former 49ers hmm. executive Carmen Policy called him the perfect fit for an offense that built a dynasty. He had an athletic build, but he also displayed power. He was, to me, the quintessential tight end uh, profile and figure. He wow. Just, uh, he showed the ability to have uh, a quick movement, strength, a skilled position with power connected to it. Honolulu Mayor Rick Blangiardi is a friend of the Francis family and considers him a pioneer. He took that physicality and took it to the highest level. And while he was there, was the best in the game. I thought that really set a model for a lot of young people yes. uh, to aspire to from the standpoint of anything and everything was possible. And Francis lived like everything was possible. The kind of individual that, uh, you know, shows up at a party, maybe having parachuted out of the plane and then, and then still strips down into his uh, tuxedo, kind of James Bondish. Yeah. You know, and, uh, it was, he, he, he really was a personality. Football, just one max. part of the Russ Francis story. He was an avid aviator, sports enthusiast, and after his playing days, jumped into media Thank and became you. sports director at KGMB. Here's Steve Young's thoughts on his concussion yesterday. I remember interviewing him in the old KGMB studios. Let and he's me. looking around and he's going, I think we used to wrestle in here. And he was right. That was yeah. the wrestling studio where all the TV production was done. So it, it was just kind of a, you know, a, a journey back to his wrestling days. Francis was later inducted into the Hawaii Sports and Polynesian Football Halls of Fame, highlighting the legacy of a man whose free spirit made a lasting impression. A really positive energy type of guy who lived life to its fullest, no question about that, because he certainly had, you know, more experiences than, than probably, you know, a dozen of us combined. Wow. 70 years old. 
we are the same age. Yeah. He and I, yeah. And uh, he no scared sharks. <laughs> Surf a boy. <laughs> I've told that story too many times, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's a good surfer too. You know, <laughs> how could they never mention that? <laughs> he goes, you know. Anyway, he, he was the mustache before yeah. Tom Selleck. Yeah, and and um, he took that year off. Do you remember that? How mm. controversial that was. Oh, I, I don't remember when he did that, but I'm, well, you know, he what happened was he was like in the height of his whole career, mm -hmm. and he said. Football is it has let me down. And oh, wow. It is not what I thought it should be or whatever. And he got all these, you know, metaphysical type reasons why. Mm. And he took a year off and then he came back and <clears throat> went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah B2, 70 right there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Only 70. Way too early. Yeah, I know, Rick S. To the maximums. Yeah, I think when he when they won that Super Bowl that year, that's when I started watching football and became a fan of the Niners. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was my team, you know. Well, and I'm sure he had a lot to do with it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, <clears throat> okay. Whew, so uh, Rita said, Aloha, Andy and James. Mahalo for being here. How's it, Rita? Okay. Let's say DJ Smook just entered the chat. Oh, I'll oh he's been DJ. in a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just focusing with my new contact lenses <laughs> on the uh, on the smaller. I mean, I, I may have to make that bigger if I do this. Um, <clears throat> okay, it's weird to look at yourself though. You know, when you're used to seeing yourself with glasses, yeah, yeah, and you go, yeah. "Hey, what happened?" Well, I went to uh, pick up my daughter. Um, um, the other day, and I forgot my glasses in the house. Yeah. And I'm driving, I'm looking like, wow, things look kind of weird. And then I look <laughs> in the mirror, I was like, yeah, that looks weird too. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's, there was a comic, I wish I could remember his name. He goes, yeah, whenever I lose my glasses, I just look around the room for two clear spots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, how's it going with you? Aware 612. Keeping busy, yeah. There, where there's uh, there's the the smoke meister, yeah, right there. Whew, Darlene S boy. just drove from McAllister, Oklahoma to Los Angeles. Oh, had a good time. Ooh, little gas involved in that trek. A lot of desert. I gotta tell you, what? Okay, um, now we're going to look at uh, a very unique Hawaii artist who's doing a type of of print that at one point was very popular mm -hmm. before cameras. Oh. But he's still doing it now, and I gotta tell you, it looks cool. Here we go, check this out. Taku is the craft of preserving and documenting a prized fishing catch. Yeah, it's a storied art form that dates back hundreds of years, and a Kaneohe artist has made it his specialty. Jim Mendoza has more. I've been wanting to show show you folks uh, how I go about making Gyotaku Naoki style. Oh. In his studio in Kaneohe, artist Naoki Hayashi puts his signature stamp Look at on that. an old Japanese art form of fish rubbings that has been around since the 19th century. It's called Gyotaku, and it was invented to document a fisherman's catch before he prepared it for a meal. Camera wasn't around, so it was an old way of uh, documenting the story, the priceless experience of life. And uh, you know, people were fishing to eat, right? So once you caught them and eat them, evidence is gone. So <laughs> Hayashi began evidence doing gone. Gyotaku art when he was 11 years old. He's been at it now for nearly five decades. It started as a hobby before becoming his profession. Yes, wow. this is what I do full time. Um, yeah, everything revolves around this. Wow. His unique method includes carefully preparing a fish for printing, then covering it with water-based acrylic paint that's non-toxic. He uses that well, instead of ink, you gotta as eat was it. used in traditional gyotaku. My objective is to not to spoil the eating quality of the fish, so <laughs> I had to modify the old way of printing gyotaku. The eating part is important to Hayashi. He will only print fish that's caught for consumption. The subjects mm. are either fishy landed or those caught by other fishermen who want a keepsake of their catch. We want to show life rather than just a dead, dead trophy on your wall. Being an avid diver, he knows how fish look in their natural habitat. So he's guided by his mind and his memory. 
The magic happens when he applies colors to a rubbing that's pressed into rice paper. I, I wow. like to see colors because uh, that's what my brain perceives nature. Wow! The finished products are beautiful in their yeah. simplicity. He says he never strives to make an art piece perfect, and the fishy prints yeah. come in all sizes. Oh, I'm uh, would be probably your finger size, yeah. That biggest one would be in my career, uh, like thousand pound model, and sometimes those big grinders come in. I gotta print them in sections. Hayashi's Giyotaku artwork is known around the world. Many wow. fishermen bring him their prize catches so he can turn them into art pieces. He does about a thousand prints a year. I stopped chasing money like 30 years ago when I started doing this and uh, I really uh, found my place. I feel blessed. When Hayashi was younger, he studied science because he wanted to become a marine biologist. Hmm. He listened to his artistic side instead and he's glad he did. I'm Jim Mendoza for Hawaii News Now. A thousand prints a year. It's just yeah. remarkable work cool. right there. It's so amazing and it just really makes you appreciate the process yes. that goes into it. I want to see that marlin, right? <laughs> Eat the marlin yeah. after too. <laughs> thousand pound. Wow. So that was his largest. <clears throat> he had to do it in piece, in parts. Because yeah. Obviously, because you can't, how you, sure. you can't turn that around. Can't turn that around. <laughs> you know what I'd like to do? <clears throat> I'd like to go with, you know, go with a giant, like piece of paper with one like you know small <laughs> manini looking little fish just imagine how that would look on the wall and what, with his signature on the bottom i oh, ain't catch that bob no but you can tell people oh how okay, come smaller fish you go no 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 the fish they're far away yeah that fish. <laughs> Well, you should. That's the bait. I went catch the marlin with. <laughs> no, see the the view you're looking at on my wall is of the globe, and then that's my giant fish in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Bachi. <laughs> it's all about your perspective. <laughs> or, or how about a boot? <laughs> okay, you know, I mean, snag that kind of here, but I figure that's all, that's all I wouldn't bring in, so yeah. just, you, you know. How come you're always putting pictures of boot? I catch mostly boots, that's <laughs> why. <laughs> oh, I get all sizes. You like to see my eight and a half. <laughs> the biggest I caught, size 13. <laughs> 13. Tri triple E wide, bro. <laughs> James went, call me up. I told him, no, 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 no. <laughs> This is already printed. <laughs> wow. Surfer print. Yeah. <laughs> the cool thing is, I remember, I didn't know about this. I mean, I've seen it in restaurants, not knowing that's an art form. Yeah. Until a friend of mine who goes diving mm -hmm. was doing that on his Instagram stories. Wow. I was like, oh, that's cool. What is that? And yeah. he told me, as you were talking, he's like, that um, the, the art form, but he's learning how to do it with the fish that he catches. Wow. That's so cool. Hmm. Okay, now we're going to uh, take a little trip down Kunia Road, yeah. okay? And if I push the button right, uh, we'll see it. If not, we're going to see what we see. Because uh, every 15 minutes, we try to play a music video. Try. Yeah. Try. Can try, yeah? Uh? Can. Hoi, how's it? This is Kaupena Kalima from Maui, Hawaii. And I watch the Daily Pigeon Live with Andy Bumatai.
St. Louis folks stop by on the other side. I just love that line. Next time I hobo, I'm going to have my woman by my side. Speaking of woman by my side. Oh, there you go. Well, the, the, the Kenako cam is not working. But the, the reason I like that line is because I wonder how she feels about that. You know, mm -hmm. next time I hobo, I'm going to have my woman. Oh, I don't like hobo. I know. I, I got to stay home. Next time you hobo, I'm going to my other friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> my other boyfriend's house. Okay, let's let's see if uh, yeah, no, Kinako can not gonna work. Not gonna work. Mm. Okay, wait. Let me try just one other thing here. Hold on. I can try one geeky thing to see if we can work it. Hold on. And it's you know what it is. It's the the camera's not on. Oh no, it's on. No, no, no. I'm saying you, you have to turn it off and turn it back oh. on. It's not it's not being seen. Oh, I see. I see. <clears throat> but. Don't worry about it. Yeah. If she's dating a hobo, she's down with hoboing. Yeah. <laughs> it's him, him and his hobo. Yeah. Hey, honey, what do you say? Oh, are we going to be riding a, um, a, a rail car? Ooh, cool. She's down with hoboing. Pick her up, James. Wow. Oh, oh, oh look, oh, yeah, look at that. Pick, pick her up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she doesn't like so, that. So, uh, hi, come here often. I know. <laughs> What's your sign? Oh, pick up the hobo chick. Yeah. <laughs> I say, hey, I'm going to go hoboing. You say, hey, it? hey, hobo chick. Uh, yeah, yeah, I live under saying? a roof. Yeah. Abba. <gasps> what? A what? Yeah, I got four walls around Whoa. me. Whoa. And guess what? <laughs> Food in the fridge. No oh, flex. Boom. Flexing. I mean, I got coins to give to your boyfriend if he needs them. <laughs> you got all the lines. I think you've been here before. Well, you know, picking up hobo chicks is the easiest pickup. Well, you know what? Speaking of commerce, mm. um, this this next bit is not from Hawaii, uh -uh. but I thought it was interesting because it was about um, it. Well, it asked the question. Is cash going away? Ooh. And uh, a whole generation was going, what? So let's check that out. Money matters, and as the world transitions into a cashless society, some are raising concerns about ageism. NBC6's Jenna Vidamonte spoke to a woman who says she experienced this firsthand. Jenna. Well, Alex, the transition to paying entirely online is becoming difficult for some. What? You know, a this. school district held a regional tournament for baseball um, over the weekend, and we were told by the AAA, which is the Arkansas Activities Association, that there would be no cash accepted, that all purchases for tickets had to be paid online. Cash options might slowly be taken away, which is something... Our She's bummed about cash going away, but she does her videos in the Instagram format. <laughs> Uh, the TikTok way. The, she's a TikToker, but she doesn't. So during the pandemic, yeah, and then uh, when we were coming out of it, uh, we were still cautious. At our football games, yeah. uh, high school, or actually all high school games, they didn't allow um, cash. cash. It was you had to buy a ticket through an app. Yeah, so you you would avoid contact. Yeah, so maybe that was it. That could be how it started. Yeah, our senior citizens are expected to adjust to. With the constant usage of smartphones and debit cards, online payment might eventually become the only option. Why is it all old people? Did you see that? It was it's just, you know, well, all the people who don't, you know, who care about cash going away, it's all the old people. They're the ones that carry the cash. That's why they get robbed by moped guys. Oh! I'm not to accept cash at all. 
and there were a lot of people I could see just by body language were very exasperated some left she told me she has two people very close to her that do not own smartphones or debit cards and it just got me thinking about how marginalized that people will be by this because I know my mother and my husband are can't be the only people that this is affecting this way and my what? husband loves to go watch the grandkids play ball and he doesn't have a, a smartphone or a credit card so that means someone has to purchase a ticket for him or go with him if he wants to go what? douglas is hoping something changes before teams play in the next tournament the the state championships are semifinals are this week and into the next week and the triple up charge of that and um I would love for them to allow people who will be traveling five hours from this area to be able to pay cash if they want to. Caddo Counseling on Aging provides resources for seniors in the area. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to learning technology, they have a simple suggestion. So when your grandkids or even maybe your kids come over, you know, just ask them. So they don't teach me how to work the phone, how to what? do the social media, um, how to look up a website. Oh my now, Karen goodness. Douglas told me that she has sent several emails to local and state officials about the issue. Alex? All right. And this is the, this is the amount of cash this lady has laying around her house. <laughs> that's, no that's, wonder. She was like, you know, the, uh, um, my friends in Mexico that send me all these products to sell. Yeah. What do I do with all my cash? What do I do with my cash? Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. have to. It's, it's a hassle. Yeah. I'll, I'll just tell the cartel that we got to do it, everything, uh, you know, electronic. So. Yeah. Money matters. And as the world transitions into a cashless system. Oops. But yeah. that's the uh, I was on a hole of that. That's the uh, like remember I was telling you where Graham went to Ecuador and they yeah you know everything is cryptocurrency. Yeah. Well, th there's no cash at all there. There is some cash, but they're 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 that's their official money or whatever is yeah. cryptocurrency. So they're moving towards that direction. There's an he said there's an island they call it a Bitcoin island where that island only accepts cryptocurrency. Only accepts. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I'm 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 trying to go back here just to hear who wanted to hear Hodge shot. Ellen. Oh, where was she? Right there. Oh, yeah, right here, Ellen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? We're we're right at the top of the hour, so let me see if yeah. I can cue this up for you, I Ellen. Think somebody asked if um, uh, Russ Francis played um, for the Patriots when the no, Bears, New England. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Was, he played for them before, so his first oh. Super Bowl that he went to was with the Niners. He didn't play on that that. Patriots team that lost the Super Bowl in 85. Okay. Yeah, so he, he, he was did not. That. He was not on that team. Ooh, what is this? Spotify would like to use your Bluetooth. Ooh, that's saying no for that, because I want to do... There's a highway out of this town And the stars Somebody come on, you snakes your way. You pull back in the nick of time. Head over heels, over the falls. <laughs> the bugger and grind. That's a hard shot. Is it? Is it? Timing was just right. Two hours passed, we bowed down. Yeah, play for free, no more money. What's up with that man? That was a hard shot. Easy, easy, bullet. You know that hard shot. Easy, easy, bullet. Yeah.
Everybody's feeling fine Like all good things must come to an end yeah. You wake up, your head aches, you don't learn Well, let's do it again That's a hard shot, easy, easy, bullet Cause you know that hard shot, easy, easy, bullet And that takes us to the top of the hour. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Ellen. So hard not to sing along to that. Yeah, it's so catchy. Yeah. Still Omega of my favorites. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Okay, gang, thank you for joining us once again. Uh, you are watching the Daily Pigeon uh, podcast. And, oh, you know, we haven't done these in a while here. Remember this? Ooh. My name is Andy Boomatai. Ah. That's right. And guess who else is here? Oh. Ooh, there we go. James right. Main. Right, James Main. And if you have any um, you know, suggestions you'd like to send us, mm. info at boomatide.com. All the time I spent on these graphics, and we <laughs> use them once every six months. But still, a special thanks to Nani Aloha, um, C. Honda, Aware, and Devin in the crinkly paper hat. And one more just got the sword today. But I'm done. Rick S on the Twitch yeah. side. So watch out, you buggers. We get in planning. Don't forget right. Sasa the like button and subscribes if you can, please. Go and help anti anti lytics and, 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 uh, and Uncle uh, Al algorithm. algorithm. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And um Let's see what else I forgot. Uh, I guess it wasn't that important. If you can, share the post. Let friends know about the podcast because mm -hmm. we'll want to share Aloha with everybody. That's the reason. Oh, I know what I was going to say. We are here weekdays, uh, 3 p.m. Um, at Hawaii Standard Time. Yep. But we're taking next week off. Yep. In fact, we're taking this Friday off mm -hmm. and we'll be back on the 17th. Yes. I have a bunch of stuff to do. And, uh, you know, we're going to take one small time break. Yes. So uh, there you go. Mahalo, everybody. Are you ready? We're going to hit the button. And three, two, one. <laughs>